My name is Josh Borstenbosch. I'm a plastic surgeon, plastic surgeon scientist. I'm interested in studying foreign body reactions and how the body reacts to soft implants and how soft implants affect the body. Did my fellowship in sort of like complex oncologic reconstruction at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. It's one of the, the largest private cancer hospital in the world, and so there's some pretty phenomenal uh, cancers that they uh, treat. And so a lot of breast reconstruction is what I mainly focused on. Um, a lot of reconstructing with the patient's own tissues, but also they did over 2,500 um, implant-based reconstructions a year. So as a consequence of that, I got to see a lot of the, the good and the bad about breast implants. So there's a handful of patients who, um, about 10% of them that suffer from uh, you know, fibrosis, inflammation around the implants. And then we also had an opportunity to uh, review the charts and treat some patients who had uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is a rare cancer that forms the exterior of textured breast implants. So what I'm interested in is how the body responds to that implant when it's uh, in the body. So it's the, the body will, you know, sort of have a reaction to it, the foreign body reaction, form a capsule at the exterior of the implant. And then depending on various different factors, that capsule can remain sort of dormant or it can become pathologic. So I'm interested in why that happens. I'm also interested in what that capsule does to the implant itself. So with um, in collaboration with Dr. Sturdy's lab, we're looking at the different conditions and how that affects the stability of the silicone breast implant. Um, and then to take it one step further, we're also doing is we're looking at how those changes to the implant affect cell signaling. So how cells respond to the surface topographic surface changes. And then taking that all together, we're also interested in is working with others to see whether or not we can try other biomaterials to see how they will respond in comparison to say silicone or any other commonly used soft implants in the body. A lot of the things that we've looked at so far are things that we've sort of had a clue clinically, but people just haven't really dug deep scientifically. So for example, one of the things we're looking at is the way different tissue types um, when in contact with an implant, contribute to the formation of a capsule. For example, for a breast implant, we know that if it's touching the glandular tissue versus whether it's touching the muscle tissue, in the muscle tissue, it's less likely to form a scar or contracture. And so what we're doing right now is we took human samples from patients and we're comparing them. And so far, it's looking that like we're you know, at least superficially seeing the same thing. And then it's, we're interested in seeing what the, you know, what cell signaling pathways govern that or underlie or what mechanism governs that. Um, the other thing is that it's the, it's sort of known that it's like implants will shed particles mm -hmm. with wear. And this has been a, a theory for that anaplastic large cell lymphoma that I, I mentioned earlier, but it's the, the extent to which this has been studied is, is very poor to date. So what we've done again with Dr. Strudy's lab is looked at the, you know, we're in the preliminary phases of looking at the surfaces to see how the surfaces change and how, um, or what, to what degree there's silicone particles that are shed from the implant and that go into the body. And then from there, what we can do is there's techniques that we can look at the cell signaling around those silicone particles to see whether that's driving any um, periprosthetic pathology. A lot of what we do, it's the it's sort of bread and butter molecular biology. I'd say right now, the most important thing that we have is pretty much everything to do with uh, our immunohistochemistry, because that's really what's driving what we're doing. So I guess the microscope is probably the most important, <laughs> keeping it simple, you know, but it's like strong fundamentals will give you, will give you good information. And then it's the, and otherwise it's the, the thermocycler or the PCR machine. Um, which we use to measure gene expression analyses. I mean, one of the interesting things about the direction that our lab is going is that there's so much uh, potential to interact with um, biomaterial scientists or engineers. Um, so specifically, it's the if any biomaterial scientist or engineer has any exciting materials that they want to test the biocompatibility of or to see how it 
responds in living systems, and certainly it's the it's ripe for collaboration, particularly if it's a soft biomaterial that we could maybe use to as a new substrate for you know breast implants or hernia mesh or, um, or any other you know, or if we can dream up some other use that we can use a biomaterial for for um, to restore function or form in the body, definitely would be interested in working with people on that.